The installation of pre-compiled Gen4 libraries in a Windows machine is very easy. Let's go through it step by step together. Let's go to the Gen4 homepage and click on download and scroll down to the section named pre-compiled libraries. There are two options for Windows machines, the zip file or an executable installer. Let's download the executable installer. Double click the installer you just downloaded and you will see a warning message given by Windows. Click for more information and run anyway. If you see a pop-up like this, click on yes to continue. Click on next and I agree. And you will be asked if you would like to add John 4 directory to the system path. I recommend you to add John 4 to the system path for all users or at least for the current user. This is a very important step. However, if you forget to do it, don't worry. I'll tell you how to fix it later. You can change the installation location, but I'll just accept the default and click on next, next, and install to start the installation process. When the installation is finished, click on finish to quit. Now, how do you know that Gen4 is installed correctly? We know that Gen4 does not provide you an executable for you to run it. However, there are still two things we can check. The first is the Gen4 installation directory. You should be able to see the uninstall icon and four directories, bin, include, lib, and share. Open the bin directory, you should be able to see the dynamic link libraries of Gen4. The second thing to check is the environment variables associated with Gen4. Press the Windows key on your keyboard briefly and start to type E, N, V, I, and press return to select the best match, edit the system environment variables. Click on the environment variables and you should be able to see the user variables for your current user and the system variables. Remember, in our installation process, we have a choice to select to add Gen4 to the system path for all users or for current user. If you select for the current user, you should check the path variable in the top list. If you select for all users, you should check the path variable in the bottom list. Where you should see the Gen4 bin directory. If you forgot to add Gen4 directory to the system path in the installation process, you can manually add it here by yourself. Your operating system relies on this variable to find out where Gen4 libraries are. So please double check it to make sure that it is set up correctly. We have one more thing to do to finish the installation of Gen4 in Windows, that is to download the data files used by some of the Gen4 physics models. Some of the data files are large. It may take a long time to download it. Just be patient. Let's take G4 Radioactive Decay Data as an example. If we click on the download button, you can see that we're going to download a .tar.gz file. Let's click on OK to save it into our hard disk. There is no need to save your data files together with your Gen4 libraries. Instead, you can choose a directory that is easy for you to get access to. In our example, we can choose the standard download folder. Let's make a new folder here called G4 Data. If you open the G4 Data directory you just created in your file browser, you should be able to see the GZ file you just download it. Unfortunately, Windows cannot extract data from GZ files. 
you can install a program called 7-Zip to help with that. After you install 7-Zip, select the data file, right-click, choose 7-Zip, and open archive. In the pop-up window, double-click the tar file again, and you should be able to see the folder. Drag it into the G4 data directory to extract it. After a successful extraction of the data file, you can close 7-zip and delete the original gz file. After all the downloading and the extractions, you should have 12 folders in your G4 data directory. The final step is to tell Gen4 where the data are saved. The procedure is described in detail in the section called Required Environment Settings on Windows in the chapter Post Install Setup in the official Gen4 installation guide. Essentially, what you need to do is to create 12 new environment variables pointing to individual data folders. You can certainly add those new variables manually, but a better way would be to write a Windows batch file to optimize this process. You can download such a script from this website and save it to the same directory where you have your G4 data extracted. Double click on the downloaded batch file, click on more info, and run anyway. And you should be able to see a black window pop up showing all the environment variables are set successfully. You can press any key to close this window. And that's it. Your GM4 is successfully installed.